small rolls in a straight line up a ramp and then roll backs, rolls back down the ramp along its original path. So the ramp is something that will look like this. All right, we have something like this. So the ball was here initially, it was here. And first it rolls up the ramp and probably it reaches at this point at a certain point and from there it rolls down the ramp uh, towards the along its original path this is the information that we have which graph shows the variation with time of the ball's velocity before we start that yeah okay so let's comment on each and every option once the ball was rising up up rises up the ramp its velocity would decrease and at the maximum point when it reaches at this point its velocity would be reduced to zero because momentarily it would stop as the ball rolls downward what happens to the velocity the velocity would increase first in the first half the velocity decreases and at the maximum height it reduces to zero and at after the ball starts rolling downward the velocity starts to increase so should it be the option D thing is velocity is a vector quantity and in velocity we have to compensate for the direction as well so if the velocity is positive if the ball is traveling towards the right side when it's rolling upward we call that velocity positive and soon as the velocity the ball rolls down it changes the direction so it, it reverses the direction so now the velocity this time has to be negative so if you consider the option A in this part in this line in this part of the diagram your velocity was initially zero then it was increasing increasing and increasing it kept increasing but since the direction was changed so the velocity was increasing with the negative sign so the velocity of the ball could be something like this as it's rolling upward once you pushed it it had the velocity let's say 30 meter per second then it kept decreasing 20 meter per second 10 meter per second and at the maximum height it reduced to zero and once it was rolling downward the velocity was increasing negative 10 negative 20 negative 30 and something like this so previously the velocity is decreasing reduces to zero and then it starts to increase and keep it in your mind negative sign here is just the direction so because the thing is if you ask yourself a question which one is greater negative 10 or negative 20 the negative 20 velocity is greater although mathematically the number negative 10 is greater but this is not the negative sign here is not for the magnitude it's just for the direction forget about the negative sign compare the magnitudes since 20 is greater than 10 so the velocity negative 20 is going to be greater than negative 10 because the negative sign is just telling you that the velocity is now in the reverse direction or towards the left side uh, what if I instead of velocity I write speed here now think about the speed now first thing about the speed is speed if we be uh, strictly for the speed speed is a scalar quantity and speed cannot be negative if you are representing speed time graph then you cannot have anything below the x-axis because for speed there is no concept of being negative because the negative sign represents the direction here 
and speed cannot be in a certain direction if it is in a certain direction we call it velocity so the speed cannot be negative it is always positive so what do we, what do we have as the ball rises up the speed decreases forget about the positive the speed decreases for speed there is no positive negative there is only positive and as the ball rolls down the slope the speed increases this there would be no reversal of the direction because we don't have direction in speed to begin with so previously the speed decreases and then the speed increases no concept of the direction so nothing below the y-axis so in that case if it were speed time graph then D would have been the right answer so uh, let, let us start off with this one a car is stationary at traffic lights when the traffic lights go green the driver presses down sharply on the accelerator the resultant horizontal force acting on the car varies with time as shown so you're provided with this graph and this is the graph for the resultant force against time so which graph shows the variation with time of the speed of the car so what we have to do is uh, we have to analyze the force time graph which is a resultant force time graph and we have to answer in terms of speed time graph so the force time graph has to be converted into speed time graph now the thing is uh, primarily in the chapter of kinematics we study distance time graph or displacement time graph and if you're traveling in the straight line these two mean the same thing so we get either uh, distance time or we get the speed time once again speed and velocity would be same if you are traveling in a straight line so speed or velocity time graphs but here we are provided and also the third one we can have the acceleration time graph so we don't explicitly draw the exp uh, acceleration time graph but from the velocity time or from speed time if we find the gradients that would correspond to the acceleration okay this one which is the resultant force we can convert it into some other graph which would be acceleration time so every time you are provided with force time graph you can convert it into acceleration time so acceleration and force time graph would be exactly the same shape wise so if acceleration is uh, if the force is zero at a certain place for example at this part the force is zero acceleration would also be zero how do we know because we studied this relation F resultant equals M a mass times acceleration but if your mass is constant then the resultant force is proportional to acceleration so whatever happens to the force happens to the acceleration if the resultant force is zero acceleration is zero and if the resultant force is constant acceleration is constant so what we do is we think of this one instead of force time graph we think of this one as acceleration time graph so this is your acceleration time graph and you have to translate it into speed time graphs or even velocity time graph because we're traveling in a straight line so it means the same thing so let's check out the first part of this graph so this is the first part so initially the acceleration is zero so in the part a acceleration is zero in the part a acceleration is zero now acceleration can be zero because of two things there are two possible ways by which acceleration can be zero first one object is not moving at all object is at rest 
the second case could be if the object is moving with uniform velocity or uniform speed in a straight line so because of these two things the acceleration can be zero but for the part a why is the acceleration zero is it because the object is at rest or is it because the object is moving with a constant velocity or uniform velocity or uniform speed so if you read out the very first sentence of the question it reads a car is stationary at traffic lights which means the speed is zero so initially the speed would be zero so if, uh, if we check out the options uh, this is not going to help us in any way because in all of them the initial speed is zero all right let's check out the next part in the part B in this part the acceleration is uniform so whatever the acceleration was at this point let's say 5 5 meter per second square it remains 5 meter per second square because it is a horizontal line and that tells you the acceleration is uniform so if the acceleration is uniform what should be the speed time graph look like for uniform acceleration well uniform acceleration acceleration if you have speed time or velocity time graph and you need to find acceleration what do you do you find gradient you find gradient of that shape and if you find gradient of velocity time or speed time graph you get acceleration so if the gradient is constant if the gradient is uniform because the acceleration uh, since the acceleration is uniform it means the gradient has to be uniform the gradient has to be constant only then we can have uniform acceleration so if the gradient of speed time graph is uniform is constant only then we can have constant acceleration now, let's check out this part in this part the gradient represented by m gradient or slope is represented by m in this part the gradient is being increased in the option c at this part the gradient is zero in the option d at this part the gradient is zero it is a horizontal line it is only the option a in which the gradient at this part is constant so the answer has to be part a okay so here we have the next one a lorry travels at a constant speed and then accelerates until it stops which graph shows the variation with time of the distance traveled by the lorry so in the first part it it travels with constant speed and then decelerates and then it stops so it has three different parts first it travel with a constant speed and then it decelerates and finally it is going to stop so let us check out with this one so we are provided the information in terms of the velocity or speed so I'm go I, what I can do is I can draw a speed time graph over here so it is your time in seconds it is your speed in meter per second so initially it traveled with a constant speed it will look something like this and then it decelerates so then it decelerates means its speed would decrease and we don't we don't know what kind of deceleration is that does that is it having uh, increasing deceleration or decreasing deceleration or uniformly decelerates so I assume that we we're going to have uniform deceleration and eventually it stops that means eventually its velocity would be reduced to zero so from there 
the velocity would be zero. So part one, part two, it decelerates. Part three, it reduces its velocity to zero. In the first part, what we have is uniform velocity or constant velocity. So what does the distance time graph looks like? What does the distance time graph look like if you have a constant speed? What kind of distance time graph do we have? That represents constant speed. It is going to be a straight inclined line. A straight line with positive gradient and uniform gradient. Because if I find the gradient of this part, how do I find speed from distance time graph? By finding the gradient. So if I find gradient of this part, what I'm going to get is a fixed gradient and a positive gradient. So fixed and positive gradient, which means I'm going to get a fixed of constant and positive velocity, which is represented by the first part. And then what happens? It decelerates. So what happens for the what happens in the distance time graph when the object decelerates? We get a decreasing curve. So something like this. It is decelerating. So it is picking up the distance, it is covering the distance, but uh, uh, it is covering the, the distance but at a slower speed now. The speed is decreasing. So it decelerates and eventually it stops. When it stops, that means it's not going to cover any distance. So whatever with the distance was, it now remains the same. For example, it reached uh, the distance of 30 meters and from there on, it remains at the, at the distance of 30 meters from the starting point. So what does that mean? It means it is not moving anymore. So it has to be for this one, it has to be the option B. All right, so let's move on to the next part. Uh, in question number three, a driver stops his car in time t by gradually increasing the total braking force on the car. The graph shows the resultant force on the car. Okay. So the driver is stopping his car in the time t by gradually increasing the total braking force on the car. So f is representing the braking force, the total braking force. So we have to convert this force time graph into, let's see, into speed time graphs. And think about it. If we are applying the braking force then should it be acceleration or deceleration? First of all, we know one thing, your speed is being decreased. Speed is being decreased. Your speed is being decreased because your decel uh, the object is being decelerated. It has a deceleration. So its speed would decrease and when the object stops, its speed would be reduced to zero. You see, what is the deceleration at this point? At the point A. The deceleration is zero. Okay? The deceleration, the value of deceleration would be zero because this point on y-axis is at zero. What is the value of deceleration at this point? It is greater than zero. Let's assume it is 10. At this point, it is 20 at this point might be 25 so it is not deceleration is not decreasing deceleration is rather increasing so can't be decreasing can't be uniform our deceleration is increasing so if you want to translate the speed time graph into deceleration or call it acceleration, the gradient has to be increasing. 
because for speed time graph in order to get to acceleration we have to find gradient but since our acceleration or deceleration is increasing so the gradient should also be increasing now let's start off with the option B what is the gradient of this line yes it is uniform and negative so it can't be the option B because our gradient has to be increasing only then it correspond to increasing acceleration or deceleration let's check out the option A what about the gradient of this one decreasing okay whenever you have a curve you can choose two points starting point and end point at the starting point the line is more of a vertical at the end point the line is more of a horizontal so gradient at the start is greater gradient at the end is smaller so it is decreasing can't be the option A let's check out the option C so in the option C the gradient first increases then decreases but we don't have this one is totally out the window we don't have anything like that that the gradient first that the excel deceleration first increases and then decreases or the other way around let's talk about the option D which is the right answer so if I find the gradient of the first part and the gradient of the last part so you see at the first part the gradient is zero so what does that mean if initially the gradient is zero the acceleration or deceleration should also be zero so let's check it out so this is your initial point this one over here this is your initial point what is the deceleration at this point isn't it zero so the shortest way is I explained it in detail but the shortest way would be find the deceleration at the initial part and for all these speed time graphs for whatever option the initial gradient is zero that would have been the right answer because initially our gradient our deceleration was zero like you can see over here at this point at the initial point the deceleration is zero then it increases 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 so at the starting of the speed time graphs the gradient should have been zero all right let's move on to the next one So here we have the next one and we are provided with displacement time graphs and uh, sorry displacement time graph and we have to convert it into velocity time graph so very easy one how do we convert displacement time graph which is the ST graph into speed time graph or velocity time it can be converted into velocity time if we find gradient because the gradient of displacement time graph gives you velocity time graph okay so what we can do is we'll try to eliminate some of the options over here so at the first part okay consider the first section a this is your section a at the section a what is the velocity I mean we can easily find the velocity at the first two seconds how do we do we find the gradient delta y or delta x or rise over run what is the rise to what is the run to so the velocity would be one meter per second so in the first two seconds the velocity has to be one meter per second so let let us eliminate the options in which the velocity is 
anything other than one meter per second. For for example, the option B. What is the velocity at the first two seconds? Two. Should have been one. So two uh, B goes out the window. Uh, option C. What is the velocity at the first two seconds? Negative one. So negative one means the reversal in the direction. So for velocity, we need to be careful. One and negative one is not the same. One generally means towards the right side and negative one generally means towards the left side. So C is not the same. Uh, D, it is same. The velocity in the first two seconds is one. A, the velocity in the first two seconds is one. So we have to choose between A and D. So uh, let's take a look at the second part. This part would not help us um, in choosing between A and D, but let's check it out anyway. So in this part, since it, it is a horizontal line and the gradient of the horizontal line is zero, so between two and four seconds, the velocity should have been zero. So velocity should be zero between two and four seconds. And in A, it is zero in D, it is zero. We can't really make any difference. Okay, so this portion would be very helpful. Between four and six seconds. So between four and six seconds. What do you think our velocity is going to be between four and six seconds? Would it be negative or positive? Forget about the value, forget about the magnitude. We want to know if our velocity is going to be positive or negative between four and six seconds. And I'm going to call it a part C. So will it be positive or negative? What do you think? Negative. Negative. And the reason being? The direction has changed. Direction has changed and the gradient would be negative. Right? If the line is upside down, the easiest way to answer is if the line is upside down, then the gradient would be negative. So if the gradient is negative, the velocity should be negative. And let's compare the option A and D. In the option D, the velocity is still positive. Matter of fact, it is plus two. But it is only the option A in which the velocity is negative. And if you find out the magnitude, you can easily apply the formula gradient equals to rise over run. What is the rise from here till here? It is four, okay, four blocks. From two to negative two, we have four blocks. What is the run from four to six? The run is two. But since the line is upside down, we can write the negative sign. So minus two meter per second would be your velocity and between four to six seconds, the velocity is minus two. All right, so here we have the next one, the velocity time graph for a train starting at one station and stopping at the next one is shown. Okay, then a pretty big dimension wise, pretty big picture we have here. Another train has double the acceleration but the maximum but the same maximum speed and same deceleration which velocity time graph on the same scale shows the motion of the train between the stations so we started off with the velocity time and the best part is we have to answer in terms of velocity time not in terms of distance time or in terms of acceleration time so that's the easiest part if you have to answer in terms of the same graph. So your vehicle has three stages. Stage A, the second stage, and the third stage. In which of these three stages the object is accelerating? One, two, or three? One, one okay. So uh, stage one, it is accelerating. In what 
in which of the three stages the object is having the maximum speed? It is true, right? Because this is a part where it has the maximum speed or maximum velocity. And at what stage the object is decelerating? That's pretty much simple. Now, deceleration corresponds to decrease in velocity, and it is this part where the velocity is going to be decreased, where the velocity is decreasing, actually. Now, think about it. Another train has double the acceleration, same maximum speed, and same deceleration. So same maximum speed and same deceleration implies that the second part and third part of the graph would remain the same because the maximum speed is same and the deceleration is same. So second part and the third part, they'll remain exactly the same. There won't be any difference in the shape of the part two and the part three. But it is going to have double the deceleration. So how do we compensate for double the deceleration? That means your gradient would now be twice of whatever gradient you have right now. Or what we can also say is if you're covering, if you're uh, getting to a certain speed in one two three four in four blocks these blocks are representing time let's call each block one second okay just for the sake of convenience if you're getting to the maximum speed in four seconds but now I double the acceleration how many seconds would you take to get to the maximum speed if you if now you have double the deceleration uh, double the acceleration sorry so the thing is if I double the acceleration now you you'll be taking half the time to get to the maximum velocity will remain the same the distance between both the stations has to be constant so the train one and the other train ha would be covering the same distance or in this case the same displacement. Now the question is how do we find displacement from velocity time graph? Can you answer that? Yes you're totally right we find the displacement by finding area under the graph so what you can do is can you find the area of this graph like all of it and since the values are not given so you can use the number of blocks and consider it a trapezium and find the area of it so, so for the trapezium we have the formula a plus b over 2 times height what is a plus b these are two parallel sides and h is the distance between these two parallel sides so this might be your a this might be your b and the distance or the separation between these two would be h. So let us find the area of this one. So it would be a equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 plus b equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 divided by 2 times what is the height 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 blocks so 2 4s are 8 and 11 plus 5 would be 16 times 4 would be 64 so the area or sorry the displacement would be 64 units Okay, we don't know if velocity is, is in centimeter per second or whatever the scale of the axis is. So we just write 64 units. 
now we have to look for the options for which the area is 64 units let's consider the option A so for the option A this is your A this part is your B and the distance between these two would be H so if I apply the formula what is A? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 A is 5 A is 5 plus what is B? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 B is 9 divided by 2 times H. What is H? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2, 4 and that would be 14 into 4. We don't get 64. So A can't be the right option. Let's check out the option B. So this is your A for the to find the area of the trapezium this is your B and the separation between these two is H so what is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 blocks so 6 plus what is B let me count those boxes and B is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 divided by 2 times H so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 over here 2 4 are 8 16 into 4 we get 64 units so the displacement in the option B is also 64 units so matter of fact if you find the area of the part C part D in part D would be more than 64 in part C it would be less than 64 but the fact of the matter is if the trains they have to cover from they have to commute from one station to the other then they have to cover the same displacement no matter what their speed is no matter what the acceleration is no matter how much time they're taking they'll have to cover the same displacement so let's move on to the next one a mass on a spring bounces up and down as shown after being released at time t equals zero. So distance up is representing on above the x-axis and distance down is represented below the x-axis. So we are provided with distance time graph. So we are provided with distance time graphs and we have to answer in terms of velocity time or speed time in this case velocity time we have to answer in terms of velocity time so whenever you have to convert the types of graph that is slightly challenging so let's focus on the first part how do we get from distance time or displacement time to velocity time what do we do? And the answer to that is a single word gradient. If you find the gradient at a certain point of the distance time or displacement time graph, you'll be getting the velocity of at that certain point. So let's consider this initial part like the very starting point you see the starting point is a horizontal line it starts off with the horizontal line so the gradient at the beginning would be zero so if the gradient at the beginning is zero so that means the velocity at the start would also be zero so initial velocity has to be zero so let's eliminate the options in which the starting velocity is not zero. In option A, the initial velocity is zero. Okay, well and good. 
B, the initial velocity is not zero. B is eliminated. C and D are pretty much in the game. They are still there. Okay, so let's check out this point. So what is the gradient at that point? And that would correspond to the velocity at that point. So can you tell me what is the gradient at this part? Is it zero or is it going to be maximum in this case? It would be maximum. The line is having the maximum steepness compared to at any other stage. So what does that mean? The velocity at this point should be maximum. So let's call this time as, let's call it two seconds. At two seconds, the velocity has to be maximum. This is two second, this is two second, and this is a point two second. Okay, so at two seconds, the velocity has to be maximum. In B, okay, B is already eliminated. C, at two seconds, the velocity should be maximum. Well, what is the velocity at two seconds for the option C? the velocity is zero so C also eliminated C eliminated and B eliminated and we have to choose from A and D okay let's check out the point this one okay I'm skipping this point because at this point the gradient is zero so the velocity should be zero and over here the velocity is zero and also for the option D the velocity is zero at this point so that won't make any difference that would not help us to pick out the right answer in any way so let's call it the point of six seconds okay we're just assuming that it is the time for it is a point where the time is six seconds so at six seconds what is the gradient so not only you have to answer either maximum minimum but also you have to give me the sign of the gradient would it be positive or negative at six seconds what is the gradient negative, negative and maximum or minimum no it is maximum you see the line is as much vertical as it can be whether upside down or downside up or the right way up it is as maximum as steep as it can be so matter of fact the minimum gradient keep it in your mind the minimum gradient is always zero so if you had the minimum gradient over here which was zero you cannot have minimum gradient at any other point unless you get a horizontal line it is only the horizontal line for which the gradient is minimum so the gradient is negative but maximum okay so think about it you have a gradient 10 and in other case you have a gradient 0 and you have a gradient negative 10 which one of these gradient is minimum 0 not negative 10 negative 10 is just telling you that the line is upside down but the second one is telling you that the line is horizontal the horizontal line means no gradient zero so this one has a maximum gradient with a positive sign but this one has a maximum gradient with the negative sign so maximum positive but this one is maximum but negative so at this point the gradient is maximum and negative so the velocity has to be maximum and negative so we can straight away eliminate the option D because the velocity at this point had to be negative but this one implies that the velocity is positive so it is only the option a for which at this point the velocity is maximum and negative see it would be maximum and negative if this is let's say plus 10 meter per second then below that it would be minus 10 meter per second maximum and negative So here we have the next one, the curved line, PQR is the velocity time graph for a car starting from rest. What is the average acceleration of the car over the first five seconds? 
area below the curve or the gradient now first of all acceleration from the speed time graph or the velocity time graph is obtained from the gradient not from the area what do we get from the area we get displacement so a and b can't be the right options so here we have this one first of all we eliminated the option a and b because acceleration is obtained if you find the gradient of the uh, curve now the next option is between the next choice is between c and d if you find need to find the average acceleration now think about it you need to find the average acceleration option b reads that you need to find the gradient of the tangent only at q so if you're finding the average acceleration then should you be finding the gradient only at a single point or should you be finding the gradient of the straight line between P and Q if you're finding the average acceleration the answer is if you need to find the acceleration only at point Q then you draw the tangent at Q and find the acceleration there find the gradient of that tangent at Q but since you need to find the average so you need to compensate both the points between P and Q so you draw a straight line between P and Q and you find the gradient of that straight line and that gives you the average acceleration okay then we have the next one when sound travels through air the air particles vibrate a graph of displacement time the displacement against time for a single air particle is shown so this is you're provided with the displacement time graph and you have to convert all of them into kinetic energy time graphs so you see in these kind of questions we have to replace the quantity with a quantity that we would be aware of or well, that would be useful for the graphs so you see kinetic energy if you remember the formula of kinetic energy kinetic energy equals 1 over 2 mv square and it is a velocity or it is the speed that we can replace kinetic energy with because wherever the uh, speed is zero kinetic energy would be would be zero and wherever the speed is maximum the kinetic energy would be maximum so instead of kinetic energy I'm writing velocity or speed here so what we have to do is we have to replace or translate displacement time into velocity time how do we do by finding the gradient at different points so this is your first first point second point third point fourth fifth and if you want to be uh, do it smartly uh, then try to follow the distant point because in most of the cases uh, you won't be able to make any difference if you choose the first three or very first four points generally it is the point on the negative side that helps you to choose between the options but let's start with the first part the line at the start is kind of a horizontal so in the starting the line was kind of a horizontal so what should be the velocity at the start the velocity should be zero so the kinetic energy should be zero so this one the velocity is starting from the maximum value a can't be the right option c can't be the right option because initially the velocity should be zero so we have to choose between a and b sorry b and d let's uh, check out this point this point over here what is the gradient at this point minimum maximum or yeah maximum or zero what is the gradient at this point Let's, let me call this point B what is the gradient of the line at point B maximum and positive or negative positive okay very good 
the gradient is positive and maximum so the kinetic energy should also be maximum so this is a point that correspond to that one which is this one so here we had this point uh, which is like one two and third point behind the capital D so at that point let's call it point C at the point C the gradient would be zero so the kinetic energy would also be zero and at the point B at this point the kinetic energy uh, the velocity would be maximum because the gradient is maximum so the kinetic energy would also be maximum so this is a point that correspond to that one so at this point we should be having the maximum speed and thereby we should be having the maximum kinetic energy so we have to choose between B and D which one of these two have the maximum kinetic energy at that point is it B or D it is D right so it is the option D which has the maximum kinetic energy at that point point. and matter of fact if we check out the next point which is a point C the gradient at that point is zero because uh, the gradient would be the uh, would be calculated by drawing a tangent at that point and the tangent would be horizontal so the gradient would be zero so this is a point that corresponds to point C the tangent was a horizontal line so the gradient would be zero thereby the velocity would be zero and if the velocity is zero the kinetic energy would also be zero so which one of these two have zero kinetic energy at point C it is once again the option D because the line C correspond to this red line and it is the option D in which the kinetic energy is zero at that point